Elizabeth Debicki's Princess Diana is first seen meeting Dodi Fade, Khalid Abdallah, the billionaire Muhammad Al Salam Fade's daw, son, in the third episode of The Crown's fifth season. But in the most recent episode of the Netflix blockbuster, her main love interest is not that ex-boyfriend, who would also perish in a car accident in Paris in 1997. Instead, Hasnat Khan, Humayun Saeed, the British-Pakistani heart surgeon she dated for two years, from 1995 to 1997, after her divorce from Prince Charles in 1992, is the one who is to blame. But, how did the then Princess of Wales really cross paths with the cardiologist, how did their relationship progress, and what precipitated its end? How did Princess Diana and Hasnat Khan actually meet? In the seventh episode of the current season, No Woman's Land, Princess Diana meets Khan for the first time when visiting her friend and acupuncturist Una Tofolo in the hospital, while her husband recovers from heart surgery. Princess Diana can be seen visibly attracted to Khan when he emerges to deliver his judgment regarding his patient. When he walks away, she calls him Dishi because she sees his name inscribed on his shoes. The scene actually occurred on September 1, 1995, and was almost exactly the same in real life. Khan was the attending surgeon at Royal Brompton Hospital and had come into the waiting area to update Tofolo on her husband's triple bypass operation. Tofolo introduced him to Princess Diana and she later said to Tofolo, isn't he drop dead gorgeous? And his name is Hasnat Khan. It's written on his shoes. In The Crown's retelling, Princess Diana then returns to the hospital several times to meet patients. She and Khan run into each other again and plan to meet after his shift. Following a touching conversation about the limitations placed on both of their lives over crisps and chocolate bought from a vending machine, they plan a first date. Going to see Ron Howard's Apollo 13 in the cinema, where Diana arrives in disguise, dressed in a dark wig and sunglasses. In actuality, Diana visited the hospital every day for the following few weeks, and she soon discovered Khan and herself in an elevator together. About two weeks after they initially met, they had a discussion and went on their first day to visit to Khan's aunt and uncle in Stratford-upon-Avon. In an interview with the police after Diana's passing, Khan said, I did not expect for one minute that she would answer yes, but I asked her if she would like to come with me. She saying she would surprised me greatly. Following this, our friendship developed into a romance. Despite this significant shift in the narrative, The Crown's portrayal does seem to contain other nuggets of truth. Diana did, in fact, wear dark wigs and sunglasses when venturing out with Khan in his Chelsea neighborhood, or queuing with him outside jazz clubs, and Khan was a fan of junk food, with the pair frequently having KFC for dinner together at Kensington Palace. What was Princess Diana's relationship with Hesnet Khan really like? With the exception of a scene in which Princess Diana bids Khan farewell and another in which she informs her son, Prince William, that she is seeing someone, the rest of their relationship primarily unfolds off-camera in the crown. Their relationship was secretive in real life, but by all accounts serious. Diana even introduced him to her sons while they talked about getting married and starting a family together, as well as the potential for moving to Pakistan. She also traveled to Pakistan in February 1996 to meet with Imran Khan, a distant cousin of Hasnat, who ran a cancer hospital. She also made a concerted effort to win over the rest of his family, including his grandmother, with whom she had been in contact for a very long time. Friends described their relationship as Diana's most significant since her marriage. Why did Princess Diana and Hasnat Khan's relationship end? Regarding the causes of Princess Diana and Khan's breakup, the crown is evasive. When Prince Charles inquires about him, she responds that she's scared him off, and in one moment, she can be seen crying as she talks to her therapist about him, stating that he has suddenly gone silent. In actuality, their relationship's conclusion was more convoluted. In 1996, when rumors of their romance appeared in the Sunday Mirror, Khan struggled to handle the media attention. Threats started coming his way, and he started to doubt his relationship with the princess. He ultimately came to the conclusion that he couldn't even go public or marry her. My main concern about us getting married was that my life would be hell because of who she was he later told the police. I knew I would not be able to live a normal life, and if we ever had children together, I would not be able to take them anywhere or do normal things with them. In July 1997, a month before her death, Khan stayed with Diana at Kensington Palace on the night before she flew to St. Tropez for her holiday with Muhammad al Fayd. After a few days, I felt something was wrong he added. I told her I thought something was wrong because of the way she had been acting, but she just said that because of the geography of where she was, she was having problems getting reception on her phone. 
The pair met again at the end of the month in Battersea, and Khan told the princess that he suspected there was now another man in her life. She denied this. At the end of our meeting in Battersea Park, we arranged to see each other again the following day at Kensington Palace. It was at that second meeting that Diana told me that it was all over between us. Diana then flew to Paris to see Dodi Fade. Some of her friends speculated that she was still in love with Khan at the time and using her new partner to send him a message. Even after their breakup, she remained in contact with Khan's family and gave them the impression that they were still together. Khan tried to call Diana again on the night of her death, but she had, by that point, changed her number.